We are taking the Canon R6 Mark II versus the Canon R7 with the 24-70 to 2.8 lens. These results will make you rethink which camera to go with. Hi, I'm Jared and welcome to Visible Tour. Today we are gonna take an awesome camera like the R6 Mark II and we're gonna stack it up against the Canon R7. The R6 Mark II, full frame, amazing images. The R7, crop sensor, 1.6 amazing images still. One is 32 megapixels, that's the R7. One is 24, and that is the R6. They both give stunning images. But when you put the same lens on both of them, what does it look like? We have the Canon 24 to 70 2.8, and the images honestly will stun you. The video that we're gonna show is just stunning from both cameras, so which one should you get? We're gonna be going out to the cemetery today because, well, it's dead quiet. Yeah, I know, a dad joke, but it really is. It's quiet, nobody bothers me. They probably think I'm in mourning or something, but it's it's honestly a great place to do some videos and photos, and you know, your subjects are always still. When I'm traveling on location, I really like to have as little as possible that I can manage. So that means small bags. Well, I've been hauling around a very large backpack for many years. And so I started researching bags and I actually came across this one by Think Tank. I reached out to these guys and I said, hey, your bags look really cool. Which one do you recommend? and they recommended this one. Now, I will tell you, they actually gave it to me to review, so I didn't pay for it. It was given to me, but I can also give you my opinion on it. So I've been using this for about uh, three to four weeks, and I will tell you, it is, it is awesome. So there are magnets right here on the lid, and so it just clicks, it just, it just, stays and it's it's awesome it's really super sturdy i have been using this quite a bit it holds this has the uh, r6 mark ii and the 24 to 70 on it um, also i have a flash in here i have a gopro in here i have batteries right here the only thing that is velcro is this little pouch in the front here otherwise there's hidden spots that are all magnetic i only like to really recommend stuff that i truly believe in so i did reach out to them after i reviewed and felt like hey this is solid so i do have an affiliate link below if you're interested in this bag check it out be sure to stick around because halfway through the video well i created about a 15 to 20 second commercial on the think tank bag i think it's pretty funny so stick around. Let's get out to the cemetery and we're gonna do the tests on the R7 and the R6 Mark II. So this is 24 millimeters on the full frame R6 Mark II, which obviously you're gonna get a lot more space, a lot more in the image of the 24 millimeters. Also, I did keep it at the 7.1 f-stop. It is at 1 50th shutter because it is gonna be the 24 frames per second, the 23.98, but instead of ISO, 200 it is iso 100 i had to drop it to keep it more equal for the light coming in because a full frame is going to let more light in less noise that's why ultimately full frames do create less noise they're crisper images but in today's technology that isn't always the case images have become a lot better so iso has become more sensitive um, cleaning up the images and the ISO hasn't created as much noise as people have thought. I could do 6400 ISO on the R6 Mark II and have very little noise. And you could do 3200 ISO, which 10, 12 years ago, none of that could even happen. You got 800 or 1000 ISO and you had a ton of noise 10 years ago. So it's getting better. And so that gap is really closing on which one's important. So anyways, this is 24 millimeters, 7.1. You're looking at 24 millimeters on a full frame, which is the proper 24. It's not the 38 millimeter equivalent that you'd be getting on the R7. So we are at 35 millimeters right now, and it's still pretty wide at 35, where on the R7, the 35 is more like a 50 millimeters. It's zoomed in a lot more. If you do want that wider, the 24 to 70 is amazing on the R6 Mark II or any full frame because you are getting that. But if you want that extra reach, that's where that second body of the R7 might come in handy 
because then you can just pop it on and it's like having a speed booster without, you know, only working on a few lenses. And 50 millimeters. So 50 millimeters on the R6 Mark II. On the R6 Mark II and the R7, when you go below that 800 base level of ISO for log, um, the histogram actually shrinks in quite a bit. It's interesting. I'll show you in this image right here, but it shrinks in, it isn't the same, and therefore that dynamic range isn't supposed to be there. So I'm curious how much it's gonna suffer from the grading of this. And finally, we are at 70 millimeters. So the R7 and the R6 Mark II at 70 millimeters and at all focal lengths are gonna have the same kind of bokeh look in the background. You're gonna have the same out of focus background. In this case, it's 7.1, so it's not gonna be that blown out or that out of focus, but you're gonna have that wider field of view when it comes to a full frame where you're gonna have a narrower field of view when it comes to the APS-C crop, the 1.6 crop. So I'm on the Canon R7 right now at 24 millimeter, which is equivalent to around 38 millimeter. I'm gonna put that equivalent to a full frame in the crop mode up there. So you know that 24 equals this-ish um, on the crop. So here we go, 24 millimeter. Um, it is at 7.1 f-stop. Um, I am not doing an ND filter. I do want to leave um, less issue with focusing through an ND filter. And so this should help a lot. So this is 24 millimeters. This is what you're getting for that kind of reach. The tripod has not moved for this compared to the R6 Mark II. So they are the same. Um, a lot more should be in focus at this 24 millimeter, 38 kind of crop look. Um, since it's at an f7.1. So now we're gonna go switch it over to uh, 35 millimeter. All right, so we are at 35 millimeter, again, 7.1 f-stop. And so you're getting a little bit more of a reach. The 35 is probably closer to what is a 50 millimeter focal length on a full frame. So you're getting a little bit more of that reach. And now let's go to a 50 millimeter on the 24 to 70. All right, now we are at the 50 millimeter so 50 millimeter times 1.6, and that is the crop factor for this equivalent onto a full frame R6 Mark II. The nice thing about the R7, it is 32 megapixels. So not only are you getting further reach with the same lenses as you would put on the R6 Mark II or any other full frame Canon, but you can also zoom in quite a bit with that 32 megapixels, especially since the R6 Mark II is just 24 megapixels. Still, it's decent nowadays. Don't shrug off the, the 24 megapixels. It's actually pretty good. But the 32 does give you extra, more crop, more zoom, a little bit sharper image on that. So 70 millimeters, 7.1 f-stop. And that 70 is equivalent to about 110 millimeters-ish on a full frame crop. So at 24 to 105 that everybody's like, man, that extra reach is nice. It might make more sense, even though it is more expensive, but by just a little bit, to get a crop sensor camera as a second body to your full frame like the R7, because now you're getting that 1.6 zoom on every lens that you have. So now your lens works both for the R6 Mark II or the R5 or whatever full frame you have. And you can use that to get further reach when you are on the R7 like this or any other APS-C. I have found that the 24 to 70 can be sometimes boring on a full frame camera body. But when you put it on the APS-C, it does give a different kind of look. And this is what I use in my studio. I use it at 24 millimeters for those talking head videos. And I find it just more interesting than if it was on the full frame, which is not what most people say. They say they would rather have it on a full frame, but I like it on the crop. It looks good. But don't take my word for it. It's just my opinion. What do you think personally? Do you like the R7 look or the R6 Mark II look with the 24 to 70? Tell me in the comments below what you think. When you're hired to photograph a funeral, grab the one and only camera bag that will make you dead silent. The Think Tank Speed Top 15. The magnetic top lid enables silent, one-handed camera access so you won't wake the dead. 
the Think Tank Speed Top guarantees you will get more funeral gigs and still be the life of the party. So we are at 2.8 at 70 millimeters on the R6 Mark II, and I'm not obeying the 180 degree shutter rule, which means that you're gonna be doubling your, um, your frames per second with your shutter. I don't have an ND filter on this one, but I wanna just show what that blown out look is like, and then we're gonna compare it also with the R7 blown out look. I'm at 70 millimeters, it should be more out of focus in the background, the bouquet should have a specific look, and the bouquet of the R7 is gonna have a very similar look too. It's just not gonna have this as wide of a view. It's gonna be more narrowed because you're zooming in, cropping in, hence. So this is what that looks like at 2.8. This is at 1 320th, just so you have an idea of what that looks like in the background. So 70 millimeters on the 24 to 70 on the R7, one 320th shutter speed just so we can you know get this exposed correctly and so the bouquet should be very similar to what you saw um, i'll actually get closer to where i was equivalent on the um, r6 mark ii but obviously i have less less space here because it's more zoomed in um, it does give you that reach which is really nice um, i like it the bouquet should be the same the zoom obviously is there, which changes that look altogether, but you've got that out of focus background that is going to be pretty much equivalent. I'm going to have to crouch down here just so I'm in frame. So what do you think? Which one do you prefer when it comes to 2.8 at the 70 millimeter focal length? So in my opinion, I think everybody should have a full frame camera and an APS-C crop sensor camera. And this is the reason why. The full frame will give you a specific look with a lens. That exact same lens on a crop sensor will give you a completely different type of look. And now it is twofold. Now, if you think about it, most cinema cameras are super 35, which is like a 1.4 or 1.5 crop. Well, the Canon is a 1.6 crop. So it's very close to that Super 35 film. And that's what we're watching when we see these movies out there. They are a Super 35 crop. There's very few movies out there right now that are filming on full frame. Even if they can, most directors like that Super 35 look and they're used to it. A lot of people rely on teleconverters when they want that extra reach. And that's from anywhere from 1.4 to two times crop on there. Now, those are about four to $600 and they only work with a select amount of lenses out there and mostly those longer zooms. They don't work with the mid range or the wide range of lenses. But if you have an APS-C crop sensor camera, that's a 1.6 in the case of the R7, well then every lens you own is all of a sudden a 1.6 zoom in. And that's why with the R7, a lot of people use the 100 to 500. So instead of having a teleconverter that only works with a couple lenses, you now have an APS-C crop sensor camera that works with every single lens that works for your full frame. So now it's twofold. You have your automatic teleconverter camera that can work with everything. Plus you can use it as a B camera or in a lot of cases, I use it as an A camera. It's on me right now at 24 millimeters with the 24 to 70, and I love the look of it. Now, the 24 millimeters on a full frame in the same space, it just doesn't look that good. Even at 35 millimeters, the compression just comes off a little bit weird. I love the 24 on a crop. It's just really nice for interview style. Now, if you are interested in the Think Tank bag, which is pretty cool of a bag, I will tell you that, the affiliate link is below, but feel free to check out their website and ask them any questions you may have on it as well. If this is the kind of content you like to hear about, well then please subscribe and like. And if you have any ideas for my next videos, feel free to leave those comments below because I actually do read them. If you're looking for some more videos to watch or want to re-watch some videos from the past, well, these are the ones to check out. And again, subscribe and I will see you in the next video. One of these right here.